Hey everyone, welcome to episode 19 of the Early Parenting Podcast. Today's episode is a special one because I'm actually going to be diving into a personal story about yours truly around my own experience with postnatal depression. Now, it is Panda Week, which is the Post and Antenatal Depression Association Week of awareness for perinatal mental health between the 10th to 16th of November, which is why I've decided to share my personal story during this week, because my life goal is to increase awareness, reduce stigma, and to just share the story so that people realize they're not alone, and for people to realize that it can bloody hell, it affects anyone. It affects anyone. Anyone who follows me on Instagram would know I'm a pretty damn bubbly person, But you got to realize that it does not prevent you from being victim and falling victim to depression, anxiety, and mental health issues throughout your entire lifespan. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive into my story on my experience with antenatal anxiety and postnatal depression. Welcome to the Early Parenting Podcast, where we help you navigate the somewhat tricky world of parenthood so you can love the crap out of being a mum. I'm your host, Jen Butler, and I'm an early parenting consultant and a mama of two busy boys. Join me as I explore all things early parenting and deliver them to you in toddler-friendly, bite-sized lessons, because let's be honest, the toddler is probably smothering pseudo-cream on the wall as we speak. I'll be dropping my hottest tips on baby and toddler sleep, feeding, boobs, behavior, and so much more. Are you ready to find your flowing motherhood? Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you today by my free clean sleeping guide that I have on my website. You can access this baby at www. Dot jenniferbutler.com.au. Now, guys, this guide is the first step I take parents through when I'm looking to help them improve their baby or toddler's sleep. You are literally getting free access to the first pillar of my triple C approach that I use to improve baby and toddler sleep. So head on over and download yourself a copy today jenniferbutler.com.au forward slash clean dash sleeping. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Okay, so let's take it back to my pregnancy with Max. I can honestly say that my anxiety started the minute I found out I was pregnant. After the initial excitement had worn off, I began to worry about the health and well-being of Max. And I mean, many of us do. We all know that Miscarriage is most common in those first three months, but I was just beside myself anxious about miscarrying. And I remember that every day I would be touching my boobs, which is so random, but I was doing it because that was my major pregnancy sign that if they were tender, that would mean that I was still pregnant. So my little sister can probably vouch for this of going to boot camp one day and me like massaging my own boobs, filling myself up in the car. Anyway random share, but that's what I was doing. So I got through the first trimester and had this blissful few weeks where I thought I was past the worst of the anxiety. Well, that was until I got my first trimester screen results back. Now, my results indicated that while my risk for trisomy 18 and 21 were low, I had markers that were abnormal and they call those markers low pape. Now, this was a whole new thing to me because when I was working as a midwife, low pape wasn't something that was assessed. I'd never heard of it. So I thought I'd jump on old mate Google and check out what it was all about. Great idea, right? Well, you can guess what the outcome of that was. (laughs) So what I found out from Googling it was that it was associated with placental insufficiency, fetal growth restriction, and stillbirth. So that little fact and that little read-up that I did basically did me over for my whole pregnancy. I was convinced that this little baby growing inside me wasn't going to survive. I was certain I was going to have a stillbirth. The thing is, is that all my midwife and doctor checks were excellent. He was growing well, he was so very active, and there was no indication of anything going wrong. 
But this is the thing with anxiety is it's irrational. It doesn't sense logic and you find yourself pouring over these made up or catastrophized thoughts and it's just horrible. Anyone who has had anxiety or who has anxiety, I am sure you're nodding your head at this sort of stuff. Anyway, much to my surprise, I gave birth to a perfectly healthy little boy named Max on the 6th of April 2015 after a very quick labour where I actually nearly popped him out on the Tullamarine Freeway in Melbourne, but that's a whole other story that I'll share another day. (laughs) Life was pretty sweet for a few weeks after having Max. I actually described those first two weeks as euphoric. I was on cloud nine and honestly, like, I was actually felt high as a kite. I was so tired, but with the concoction of hormones that were pulsing through my veins, I actually remember thinking that I felt amazing and that I had it all together and I was nailing this parenting gig. Well, then the bubble burst and when it burst, it burst bloody hard. It was about week four. So I remember this one day when my sister came over and I was I was having a panic attack. There's no doubt about it. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't focus. It felt like I wasn't attached to my body. Like I was physically there, but mentally I was somewhere else. I remember thinking I was going to need to go to a psych unit and be hospitalized to get myself right. I was just so stuck in my head and I couldn't get out. And then, of course, that heavy, heavy feeling like there was someone sitting on my chest and that inability to catch my breath. It was, uh, I'll never forget that day. That was the only real anxious day I can really report in my postnatal journey because after that, it was more the depressive symptoms that kicked in. So to share a little bit about the symptoms that I experienced with postnatal depression, because again, they do vary between woman to woman or father to father because postnatal depression does not discriminate with gender. I actually have a interview with the amazing Nicole Hyatt from COPE, which is the Centre of Perinatal Excellence coming up next week, which you have to have to f- listen to. Uh, and she goes into um, the symptoms of depression and so, so much more. But today's all about sharing my experience. So the symptoms that I experienced were hypersomnia. So no matter how much I slept, which obviously is a new parent, you're not getting a lot, but you know, I was having plenty of opportunities to get extra rest, but I could just never get enough. I was constantly tired beyond what I would deem, because I now have had a second child and know the difference, normal post-baby tiredness. But then on the other hand, I also experienced insomnia. So I would feed Max and then sometimes lay awake until his next feed. So I was just getting more and more anxious because I knew, you know, that three, four hours was coming up and that I hadn't even slept between the time of his feeds. And it was that vicious battle because the anxiety was stopping me from sleeping. I needed to sleep in order to get on top of it. Oh, it was a horrible circle. I had reduced hunger. So I was never hungry. I made myself eat, but Often what I ate was terrible, which sure as hell did not help my recovery at all. I definitely had a loss of enjoyment in things. So I'm a natural extrovert. I love socializing, but the the thought of getting out of the house was so unappealing and I just wanted to lock myself away from the world. I was super, super angry and irritable. And poor Ryan copped most of the brunt of this anger. I was very resentful for him just doing what dads do, going to work. He was playing football, just anything that he did, basically. I was just very resentful and it was just the shortest fuse and, and a very angry person, which is, again, very unlike me. And I wasn't able to cope very well with Max's crying. So I was super sensitive to his cry. I was rushing to every little peep. It was so unnecessary And I was just, but you know, and then as the crying would increase, I would just panic and I wouldn't know what to do, which of course doesn't help your mental health in itself because you feel like an absolute failure of a mum that you can't help your baby and their cries. And I had no motivation to do anything. So I'd literally just sit in my pajamas all day and I'd just be waiting for Max's next nap so I could go and have a nap again. It was just a really sad existence. Important to note, never once did I not love Max. This is, I think, why mums are so worried about ever saying that they've got postnatal depression. Like, it's some sort of reflection of you not actually loving your child. It's a goddamn disease. It's literally like, okay, you don't catch depression, but it's literally like you 
having some bacterial infection that has that you've caught and you need to get treatment for it. No one is chooses to be depressed because they want to be. So, and you certainly it's not about not loving your child. But was I excited to do the things motherhood requires? Mm, hell no. <laughs> So just existing was exhausting. I get really emotional as I talk about this because it honestly brings up a very sad and traumatic part of my life. Did I enjoy Max as a newborn? No, I didn't. And I will honestly say that hand on heart that it was, if anything, quite a traumatic part of my life. But guys, the good news is I got through it. With the support of my colleagues from, I was working as an enhanced maternal and child health nurse at the time. And I was living in Melbourne, so I actually didn't have really any family or friends support. So I had my beautiful colleagues. Oh, I'm going to cry. My beautiful colleagues from the Enhanced Maternal and Child Health Service visiting me. And they referred me to a GP and a psychologist. So I started off seeing a psychologist and it was awesome. It was really therapeutic. However, I found I only felt good for about a day or two following our consults. And then I would sort of return to that dark place once again. So talking helped so much, but for me, it just wasn't enough. So we went through all of this for about three months until finally Ryan said that something needed to change or I don't know, it just what was happening was not working. So Ryan decided to take some long service leave from work because I was struggling so much. We had no other support in Melbourne, so it was all up to him. We decided we would go to the GP again and actually get an updated script for the antidepressants that she'd actually prescribed me months earlier, but I was just in denial that I needed them. And so I got an updated script and I went and got my first lot of antidepressants filled. This was such a tough choice. And man, oh man, if I had known though what they were going to do to me, I would have taken them straight away. About four weeks it took for them to kick in, I say in inverted commas. But man, when they did, I was back. I was motivated to potter around the kitchen and, and house just doing things. Like that's sort of what I love to do is to keep busy, making meals. I was preparing Max's solids. I was enjoying Max's awake time. I was taking him to the library to rhyme time. I was going to mother's group. I was going for just getting out of the house and going for a walk and grabbing a coffee. I wasn't doing any of that. And I wasn't needing to sleep every chance I got. And I was better able to read and understand and support Max's cues. And the anger subsided, which was heavenly. It was the most relief I've ever felt in my life. Okay, like probably besides the part when you finish pushing out your baby and finally the goddamn contractions have stopped. But besides from that, yeah, (laughs) most relief I've ever felt. So my experience changed me. It changed me for the better because it made me a person who realized how tough it is to live with a mental health illness. And if anything, it made me such a better maternal and child health nurse. And guys, to be honest, my experience with postnatal depression is the reason why I'm here right now in my walk-in wardrobe talking to you in a microphone via a podcast and my the whole reason why I have Jen Butler Early Parenting Support, because back then when I was in the depths of despair, there was no one that was really able to offer me the support that I needed when it came to early parenting stuff. So I had amazing support when it came to my mental health, but it was really lacking in terms of someone to look for, for reputable advice. And I just remember thinking all the way back then, I don't want any other mum to feel the way that I have. Like technically going into motherhood, I should have I should have been able to kill it. Like I had all the knowledge of a midwife, a maternal and child health nurse. Like you'd think that I would have just cruised through things. But you can see, and now that you've heard my story, that maybe I could have if I ha- didn't have depression or if I hadn't had the anxiety, you know, coulda, 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 all of these things that you could have done. But at the end of the day, I did struggle. And I now have both my knowledge and my expertise and my experience in having gone through hell and back to be able to bring support now to mums. And I'm not going to be able to touch the lives of everyone, but I hope to God I can make an impact to the women and the fathers and the babies 
who I get to work with. So there you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed my story. The, as I said, the reason I'm doing this is because I, yeah, I want to break the stigma. I want to talk. I want people to be talking about their experiences with depression and don't be scared. And if you don't feel like you, then please go and talk to someone. Like I said, it's Panda Week between the 10th to 16th of November and Panda are an amazing resource to contact, to talk about. They have counsellors who you can give a call to and have a chat to over how you're feeling and they will help to guide you into decisions that you can make next. Because another ugly thing about depression is being indecisive and unable to make these sorts of decisions. And I hear a lot too of, oh, but I have good days and, you know, it's not all bad. And I guess sometimes it's when you're looking at things and realizing that you've got more bad days than good or more bad moments than good moments. These are the sorts of things that you need to think about and and ask yourself, is it time to talk to someone? Anyway, guys, like I said, I've got Nicole Hyatt from Cope talking next week on the podcast. It's going to be an absolute cracker. It's so informative and so important for everyone to really get their heads around what perinatal, which is pregnancy and afterwards, is all about in terms of depression and anxiety. So make sure to join me here next week. Thank you so much for joining me. See ya. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please head on over to your podcast streaming app, whether that's Apple or Spotify, and leave me a review. I want this podcast to get to as many ears as possible so that other mums who might be having the same questions as you can find a little bit of information to help their parenting journey along. And you know what? While you're over there leaving a review, please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a single one of my episodes. And don't forget to hit me up on my socials, Facebook and Instagram, at Jem Butler Early Parenting. Can't wait to bring you your next episode. I'll see you back here again then.